All right, let's talk about what's happening in the Florida real estate market. And our price is gonna be coming down. This is the general uh, consensus right now. But uh, let's dive into why exactly they might be coming down and why they might not be coming down. Right now, I'm taking a walk here over at Governor Ron DeSantis Park in Manatee County. Uh, it's a nice little place with a couple playgrounds and uh, you know a dog park for small dogs, another one for big dogs, and a tennis court and bathrooms and so on. Um, and by the way, if you don't know who I am, my name is Maciek Zaremba. I'm a real estate agent in Sarasota, Manatee County in Florida. If you have any questions on real estate, just click my links and you can get in touch with me. All right, so first things first, we need to talk about inventory. And across the state, we are having rising inventory levels. There might be a few small exceptions, a few counties where the inventory levels are not rising as fast as other counties. And for example, in the Sarasota Manatee market, uh, two months in a row, we had an almost 10% increase month over month. And I'm not talking about year over year because that doesn't really matter. A lot of people are talking about year over year, all the reports come out year over year no one really cares what happened last year compared to this year they want to know what's happening right now and I do market videos you know for my local area and we have had I think 9.2 percent on the last month over month increase now what if that compounds for five months straight that's going to be such a large increase in inventory and what does this mean for you easy it means that there's going to be more competition if you're a seller and there's going to be more options if you're a buyer so that's great for you buyers out there and are we expecting this inventory to keep rising well you know yes and no i mean it really uh depends of course i always say that just like a lawyer does but basically here's the bottom line if we have our interest rates stay the same, which we are expecting for the first half of 2024 uh, to stay the same, and then we're expecting decreases, three decreases in the second half of 2024, well, then we're going to have that buyer demand kind of ramp up a little bit and homes will sell. But is that going to be too late? Yes. Well, that's my opinion. I think it's gonna to be too late. I think we're gonna be in a strong buyer's market by the time that happens, because if we have a 10% increase, call it 5% increase in inventory, month over month for six months straight, we're at the very beginning of January right now, I think we're gonna have enough inventory to allow the buyers to really negotiate. And it's not one of these negotiations where you you know lowball 30% off, no not even 10% off. But what you're gonna have as a buyer is the ability to go and say, hey, listen, seller, I would like for you to contribute 3% of the purchase price towards my closing costs. And now the buyer's out of pocket is gonna be much lower, and that is something that is already starting to happen, and we're not yet, with the inventory level, is not yet at the buyer market levels. We're still officially in a seller's market, but I've been saying this for months, surely doesn't feel like it. So right now, what the Federal Reserve said is that they're expecting to have three interest rate declines uh, at the end of 2024. You know, from my experience, just tracking this kind of stuff, it's probably not gonna happen. It seems like they promise something and then deliver something slightly different. It's never like completely different, but it's never completely the same either. So is it gonna happen? I don't think so. I think that uh, they're not gonna lower those rates because lower interest rates ends up having an impact on inflation and it increases inflation theoretically and practically most of the time. But there is another factor that is impacting our interest rates and that is the profit margin of the banks. Because of this announcement by the Federal Reserve, what they ended up doing is lowering the profit basically of their mortgages by about 1%, not quite, but almost there. So from about three weeks ago till today, and we're in the first, we're at the end of the first week of January, 2024, they decreased the interest rates, the effective interest rate to the buyer. So basically a lot of buyers that were just sitting on the sidelines because everything was like close to 8%, if not at 8%, um, took, made a move, you know, and they locked in and they bought something. And now they're, they're locked in in the high sixes or low sevens. Now, if you pay some points, you can get it down even lower. 
So this demand did increase. So what I'm expecting is that our next market update for the month of December, it's probably not gonna show that we had um, a major increase in inventory because we had a whole bunch of buyers come out of the woodwork. However, pay attention to this. If our inventory still rose dramatically, even with this interest rate decline and all these buyers buying, what that tells me is that we either had a whole bunch of properties go on the market unexpectedly, because a whole bunch did go under contract, or a lot of the buyers still haven't made the move. They haven't pulled the trigger and they haven't committed to purchasing a home. Now we need to talk about one other thing about prices decreasing because what you're seeing when you're looking at, you know, how much your neighbor sold for is the actual sales price. But what you're not seeing is the actual dollar amount that the seller got in their pocket after paying the realtors, after paying the taxes, and of course, after all the seller concessions. And a seller concession is basically money given from the seller to the buyer as part of the transaction. So they artificially inflate the price. So the price might be $500,000, but then there's a 3% seller concession and sometimes up to 6% in some instances. And then that's basically an effective 485 purchase price. Uh, and then we have this whole commission crunch happening for the buyer's agents and it hasn't really affected my local area, but I'm pretty sure within two, three, four years, we're going to have less buyer commissions being offered. So prices will come down even more because of that. The sellers think that they're going to actually pocket that difference, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the reality is going to be that the ones that need to sell are going to sell because they're just going to lower the price real low. So to answer the first question that I asked in this video is why prices might be coming down. Let's recap a little bit. First of all, our inventory is surging and we have not been expecting such large increases. And when they compound month over month, double digits, we end up having double inventory within a few short months. Next reason is because the interest rates are not ready to come down yet. The Federal Reserve said that they're going to come down in the second half of 2024, but I don't believe what the Federal Reserve says. They always lie. They say one thing and then they do another. So fat chance on that. And then another thing that I didn't even touch on yet is that there's still a lot of people who have this 3.5% interest rate 3.0 or even 4.0 and they're just not ready to start increasing their payment they committed to a 30-year fixed rate mortgage you know four or five years back maybe even three years back and they're not even willing to go into that six percent rate if you pay some points right now you can get six percent so sometimes you can even get the seller to pay but Honestly, the sellers out there are not necessarily going to go and sell their home that they have a really low interest rate on and then buy another home with a much higher interest rate. Now, the ones that need to move are listed. And now another question that I asked here at the beginning is why is it that perhaps we might have our prices increase? Well, I really don't think that's going to happen. And here's why. The main reason why it would happen is if we actually do get our interest rate declines if they just cut the interest rates significantly and if we have three significant cuts let's just say one in the first half of 2024 and then two in the second half of 24 and then we have maybe a four and a half percent interest rate listen this is going to cause a lot of people to actually list their home and sell but when all these people come out and list their home to sell it that you know are kind of like ready to give up their 4.0 for a 4.5% interest rate, there's already gonna be a lot of homes for sale out on the market. And what it's gonna do is in the you know medium term, and not the long term, but medium, it's gonna cause our inflation to go up. And when inflation goes up, everything gets more expensive. No one really wins in this. And then the government has to take more measures to control inflation, which is what's happening right now. They are taking measures by increasing interest rates. So where is that fine balance? And this is what the Federal Reserve does. They try to figure out what is the best way to go and increase rates, decrease rates, stimulate the economy, uh, kind of give a boost 
to business owners to go and invest and homeowners to spend money. Um, and right now, you know, it's, it's a lot better than it was a year ago. Let's say that. But I think we're still very far away from a good productive result. And frankly, I don't think we're gonna see another frenzy surge like we had for probably at least another decade, maybe even 20 years. So listen, if you're a buyer out there and you're thinking about, you know, hey, maybe I should buy, maybe I should do something, you know, my recommendation is maybe wait a little unless you're an investor investors always have opportunities so so investors just are led by the numbers nothing to do with rates if the numbers make sense invest that's really what it's all about and frankly if you want to have a conversation with me about investing please i've been just call me reach out to me i've been a real estate agent and an investor uh, for a very long time i started investing in when i was 21 or so i'm 45 right now so i have lots of experience and i've had over 500 tenants i could tell you about some of the pros and cons and if you guys have any questions please drop it in the comments be glad to help you out and answer anything I can from my experience. Thanks so much for watching.